So in this video, I'm going to go through all of the individual transformations that we can do. Specifically, we're going to talk about these transformations in terms of the square root function. Now, the original square root function, I'm going to go ahead and write this way up at the top here, is f of x equals the square root of x. Now, the f of x could be y, it could be g of x. That part's not really important. Um, what is important, though, that you're dealing with the square root of x. Now, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to make all these different transformations. We're going to change A, B, C, and D. We're going to talk about what that's going to do to the graph. And all of these graphs, we're going to kind of sketch the transformed function. Now, this is the original. All of these little blue curves right here are the original um, square root of x graph. So the first three we're going to talk about here are all changes to A. So A is when we've got something being multiplied times the entire function. So if we say that A is greater than zero, uh, no, greater than one, okay? So that might be an example here, and I'm gonna put EX for example. Let's say we did G of X is equal to five times the square root of X, okay? This is a vertical stretch. It's going to stretch this graph five times further away from the x-axis. So what that might look like is you're going to start at the same point, 0, 0, because you can't, if you multiply 0 times 5, you'd still get 0. Um, but all of these other points here are going to be five times further away. Now, I'm not going to draw that terribly great, but something like this. It's going to be much further away from the x-axis. Um, let's say that a is between 0 and 1. So think of decimals between 0 and 1. Think of you've got um, fractions between 0 and 1. And let's say, for example, we do h of x is equal to 1 half the square root of x. Now, that 1 half is going to, whoops, sorry about that, is, <laughs> I'm just doing some strange stuff here now. Uh, that 1 half is going to take all of these points on the curve and compress them closer to the x-axis. In fact, it's going to be half the distance to the x-axis. So that might look, again, 0, 0 won't change. Uh, but maybe something like that, okay? So between the blue curve and the x-axis, we're halfway between them, okay? Um, last but not least for the a values here is what happens if a is less than zero? That means a is negative. So let's keep it really simple, and let's just do negative square root of x. All right, I'm not going to do any stretches or compressions with it, Let's just go ahead and do the reflection over the x-axis. So what's going to happen here is this original curve, every single point is going to be mirrored over the x-axis. Okay, so this is k of x down here, and this is the f of x up on top. So those are the changes that we can do for a. Let's see what we can do when we change b. All right, and I think I can fit this all in can. So there's the three possibilities for B. So let's start up at the top here. Um, if B is greater than one, now this is where they start getting weird. All right, so let's go ahead and name the function. So for example, let's do uh, J of X is equal to, now this is going to change inside the uh, square root. So this might be something like 3x, okay? Now, this is where it's, I'm trying to remember, <laughs> you know, get the exact terminology here. So this is going to be a horizontal compression by a factor of one third. So we're going to take all of these points and we're going to compress them back towards the y-axis, okay? So a horizontal compression, all of these points are going to get one-third closer to the y-axis. Now I'm a little shaky when I draw this, but, you know, the curve is somewhere over there, all right? 
Um, so now what happens if B is between zero and one? All right, so let's go for example again, zero and one is some kind of decimal or fraction value that's greater than uh, zero but less than one. So let's say for example we do um, P of X is equal to the square root of point, I don't know, four X. Now this is gonna get a little bit weird because of the factors here. You would have a horizontal stretch by a factor of one over 0.4. Now one over 0.4, I'm trying to do the math in my head really quickly, is two point something when you actually do the, divi uh, do the multiplication division out. So that's actually going to stretch this graph further away from the x axis, um, sorry, the y axis. So maybe something like this. So all the points have been pulled away from the y-axis. And the last one is what happens if your B value is negative. So let's keep it real simple. Uh, let's do T of X is equal to, now inside the square root, let's make the X negative. This negative is going to reflect this graph across the y-axis. So instead of moving from uh, 0, 0, and then moving to the right, you're going to start at 0, 0, and mirror the graph to the left. All right, so that would be your um, reflection across the y-axis. All right, two more variables to deal with. We've got uh, what happens with C. C only has two possibilities, all right? So, and I'm gonna basically, C is greater than zero. Now this is where the example is gonna look a little weird, all right? So let's go ahead and throw an example in here. Um, I don't know, G of X, I probably used that before, but that's okay. So square root of x minus, now I want the c value to be positive, right? Greater than zero, so positive. Let's go ahead and put a, you know, minus two here. Okay, so x minus two. This is actually gonna shift the graph to the right two units. So this whole graph, just pick everything up and move it to the right two units and then repeat the graph. Okay, so it's the exact same graph. It's just been shifted to the right two spaces because, well, it says x minus 2. If your c value is negative, and again, I want to be careful with my uh, notation here. Uh, so for example, um, let's say I do h of x is equal to, now I'm going to write it kind of weird the first time because our notation here says x minus c. So I'm gonna do x minus, and then I'm gonna make c negative. So let's say c is negative five. Now, mathematically, we don't normally write this as minus a negative five. We're kind of lazy, and we just said, well, that's the same thing as x plus five. It's easier to write the single sign rather than two. So if we have the example of x plus five, this is actually gonna shift our graph to the left, five units. So take the whole graph, shift it to the left, five units or whatever amount of units you're shifting, and then make the same exact graph. All right, same exact curve. Uh, last two for this video are what happens with D. D is the straightforward one. I, those are, these are my absolute favorite because they're the most straightforward out of everything. These are your vertical shifts. So, if D is greater than zero, which means it's positive, let's say we have something like K of X is equal to the square root of X. Now you'll notice the root has stopped here and I'm gonna go ahead and add two or add whatever to the entire function. So square root and then I'm adding two to it. This is a vertical shift. Okay, so be careful that you recognize the difference between these horizontal shifts that are happening inside the roots versus things that are being added or subtracted outside of the root. So vertical shift up, in this case, I'm gonna shift it up two units. So every single point just moves up two units and again, make the exact same curve here. And that's your vertical shift up two uh, or up however many units. And then if D is less than zero, 
So for example, let's say m of x is equal to the square root of x minus 4. Again, the root stops, and then I'm subtracting 4 from the square root function. So I'm going to take this whole graph, shift it down 4 units, and then draw the curve in. Okay. Now, my sketches are just to kind of give you an idea of the shifts. It's not perfect. If I was looking for perfect, I'd graph these on Desmos or some other technology. But this is just a quick sketch to kind of get you to figure out what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and close the video here. If you have any questions or concerns with these individual uh, pieces, let me know. Um, in the second video, I'll move on to the next page where we start identifying um, multiple transformations in one problem.